The Las Vegas Raiders have pulled out two surprising wins this season, but that's where the positives end. From a quarterback change heading into week six to trade requests from a franchise player, there's a lot to discuss. So don't go anywhere. Sin City Beat starts right now. From Las Vegas, this is Sin City Beat. Hello and welcome into Sin City Beat. I'm Mariah Janos in for Mike Davis. It's hard to fill those shoes, but we're going to try. Thanks for joining us. Sin City Beat is the show that dissects the Vegas sports world through the eyes of the sports reporters and storytellers leading the charge. On today's show, joining the panel, we got Harry Ruiz, Raiders Spanish play-by-play -play announcer. We have our very own Mike Allen from Fox 5 Vegas. And last but not least, we have Patrick Berber of ESPN Radio Las Vegas. Thank you all for being here. Now, there have been a lot of changes uh, and a lot of things plaguing the Raiders so far this season. But let's start with week five against Denver. It was the first time the Broncos beat the Raiders since the move from Oakland to Vegas. And while Denver was silent in the first quarter, they ran up the scoreboard in the remaining three on the way to a 34 to 18 win. Harry, what jumped out at you as the biggest issues from that loss? Yeah, the offense not being able to move the ball after the pick six from Pat Sertan. They made it all the way into the red zone. They got into the five yard line. They had a first and goal there, but the interception changed the game completely. They went from having 202 yards in their first three drives to then going to 120 the rest of the way. 80 of them after Denver had scored 34 points in a row. That can't happen. So the silver and black needs to fix their offensive issues. You can't leave the defense out there in the field as much as they did because they're going to end up breaking down. And that's what happened on Sunday. Well, I was going to say, Mike, did that defense look gassed to you at all? Because they have to make up for what the offense is not contributing. It did look gassed. And uh, I'll tell you what stood out to me was that Bo Nix had a career day. Mm -hmm. So his first four games, he wasn't lighting the world on fire. All of a sudden against the Raiders, he had a passer rating of, I believe, 117. That was like 42 points higher than his previous high. And that's not something you want as a Raiders defense who's known for rushing the passer. And Bo Nix, uh, you know, he was able to run around. He was able to make plays. That's not something you want to see is give a rookie quarterback that much. And, and, and he got two touchdown passes. That was his career high. Uh, he said also a career high in completion percentage, 70%. Uh, Nix, again, was struggling before that Raiders game. You don't want to be the team that got him back on track. The defense absolutely looked gas. Well, speaking of that, the defense has always been the safe area. When you look at this Raiders roster, you're always more concerned about the offense, especially this season. But should we be concerned about the defense at all, Pat? I, I don't think there's a lot to be too concerned about. Obviously, Matt Crosby, he's dealing with a lingering injury right now. Once he gets healthy, that defense is going to be really good and going again. The secondary is playing a lot better than expected throughout the year. They have a really good linebacker room. Um, their linebacker, uh, forget the, the middle linebacker, Spill, Spillane. Spillane, he, mm -hmm. he leads the league in tackles. He's really good stopping the run. So I think there's a lot of positives to look at this defense. So as long as the offense can get going and get on the same page, I think that the defense is going to be able to not be too gassed and hold up. Well, you spoke to the positives of the defense. The positives of the offense, the one highlight I saw, Brock Bowers, that 57 uh, catch and run for him. Do you think Luke Getze should be building the offense around what they have in Brock Bowers? Harry? Absolutely. And now they're going to miss Devontae Adams for a second game in a row. They got to focus the, the offense on Brock Bowers and have Brock Bowers be the number one weapon. With all due respect to Jacoby Myers, I'm a huge fan of Kobe, mm -hmm. but you got to have Brock Bowers be that guy. You see at the height, you see his height, his strength, the speed. He's a difference maker on the field. And after just throwing the ball twice at his way in the, the previous game against the Browns over here they were like you know what just feed him early feed him often and he almost had 100 yards but he had his second best game when it comes to receptions and yards first touchdown in the NFL it was his welcoming out party it really was now aside from Brock Bowers we keep saying this narrative of the Raiders just can't seem to get the offense going we're heading into week six Pat, is this just what it is? Is it is is what we're seeing what we're going to get for the remainder of the season, do you think? I, I think you're going to see a little bit more of this offense. Trey Tucker has really emerged. I think he's one of the better wide receiver threes in the league, and he could compete for that wide receiver two spot with Jacoby Myers now that um, when Devontae Adams, if and when he comes back, I think that he could really solidify himself as a number two. He's really good. He's a good deep threat as well. They really got established a running game, though. They've got Samir White, who's dealing with a groin injury right now. 
but Alexander Madison can also be that key number two guy that can really like stretch the field, kind of like receive some balls out of the backfield. So if they're able to get those guys going to open up the passing game, I think that will solidify their offense a little bit more. Yeah, for a team that is struggling as much as they are at the quarterback position, now there's a competition, which of course we're going to talk about mm -hmm. in just a little bit. Uh, the Raiders really, really could use a strong run game, which they're not getting at all. I think they're really missing Josh Jacobs. Oh yeah, absolutely. Do you like what you've seen from Zamir White at all really quickly, Harry? It's been up, ups and downs. And even this past game, you saw Amir Abdullah break, break out a 40-yard carry. You saw Gardner Minshew run the ball twice for 11 yards. But besides that, most of the carries were being stopped at the line of scrimmage or one two yard stops that can't be happening mm -hmm. because then you put your offense behind the eight ball with second and eights third and sevens and that can't be happening no it cannot all right so a lot still to talk about as we approach week six the raiders are making a quarterback change gardner Minshew has run out of magic and aiden o'connell is stepping up will this help the situation at all here in vegas we'll discuss it next Welcome back. During training camp, the Raiders had one of the least exciting quarterback battles in Gardner Minshew versus Aiden O'Connell. Minshew landing the starting job for the first five weeks, but it may be time to go back to the drawing board. After that week five loss to Denver, head coach Antonio Pierce said he would not name a starter for week six. Well, the big man has made his decision. Aiden O'Connell is QB1 going forward. Patrick, is this the right move? I, I really like it. I mean, Gardner Minshew, he's been in the league for quite a few years now. You know what you're going to get out of him. He's not going to lead your team to the promised land. Aiden O'Connell, yes, he was a rookie last year, but towards the end of his year, he had a promising rookie campaign. He had threw eight touchdowns, no picks over the final four or five weeks of the season. And they didn't name him QB1 to start the year, so that might have like hurt his morale a little bit. Mm -hmm. But from day one, Aiden O'Connell, I think, has been Antonio Pierce's guy. And I think you got to really see what you got with Aiden O'Connell before the draft comes up this year. So they're going to ride at AOC the rest of the year and see what they get out of him. I like the move because you know what you're getting from Minshew. You really don't know what you're getting from AOC yet. So let's see what happens. Is AOC motivated enough to take over this role, Harry? Oh, absolutely. He is hyped right now. He's a guy that's not going to show it when it comes to mm -hmm. talking to the media and being an overly expressive guy. But this is a player that received an opportunity towards the second half of last season. He had ups and downs. He had a shutout at home against them, against the Vikings, a 3 to nothing loss. And then four days later, they went on to score 60-plus points against the Los Angeles Chargers. But I just think they needed something different right now in that offense to be like, okay, it hasn't worked the first five games. And coincidentally, when the when Gardner Minshew had his game with the least amount of production against the Browns, the Raiders went on and, went and won that game. So mm -hmm. what happened there? No fumbles, no interceptions from Minshew. Then he goes on to Denver, two interceptions. That isn't going to cut it right now. When you look at this roster, the margin of error is minimum. Mm -hmm. And you become a team that's become making mistakes with turnovers and with penalties. You need something different. And I think Aiden O'Connell is the right guy for the moment. I mean, Mike, is this just the reality when you have these two quarterbacks in your room, neither of them are a franchise quarterback. You kind of just got to make lemon out of lemonades at this point, or lemonade out of lemons at that's this point. That's right. Excuse that's me. right. And and you do. And and you were. It was a scathing uh, uh, comment, but so true that this was just a very not super interesting quarterback battle. Scathing. Oh. Right. But but true. <laughs> yes. And 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 that's and Aiden O'Connell is is not necessarily uh, has not shown. Uh, that he is going to be the guy moving forward. He, he very well could be, and he certainly has fewer games started in the NFL than Gardner Minshew. So like Patrick was saying, that is a, a good sign that maybe we haven't seen the best of Aiden O'Connell. But I've got a little bit for you. Okay, so, so far this year, the Raiders have allowed, or I should say, have scored 19 points per game. That's with Gardner Minshew starting all five games. Mm -hmm. Last year, Aiden O'Connell started 10 games. Average of 22 points per game. But you take out that Chargers game, which I think we could all agree yeah. is maybe an Ooh. outlier. Right. That's only uh, a little bit above 17 points a game. Okay. So less than they're scoring this year. And that's 10 games versus five games, small sample sizes. Again, I do agree that making the switch might wind up being the best thing for the team because there is a lot more unknown with O'Connell. Maybe he does uh, scratch a little bit more of his potential out. But... <sighs> To make it's it fair, to though, say this is a good if you take out the Chargers game, I would also take out the shutout against That's the Vikings true. and then average those other games. But the thing right now with the Raiders is that over the last decade, they've pretty much been good enough to not be in the top 10 in the draft 
often, but they have also haven't been good enough yeah. to be in the playoffs uh, in a consistent matter. If you take out that 2021 season, which had a lot of situations going down, look at the things. When did they have a top five pick? When they got Cleveland Furl with the top four. When did they have another top 10 pick? Tyree Wilson. Besides that, they've been picking over after the 10th pick in the draft. So right now, that's why they're in the, this, this quarterback situation. They haven't been in a good spot in the draft to select a quarterback that has a lot of hype around them. So we got to keep waiting to see what happens right there. They went with, all right, let's get Gardner Minshew in case we can't get a quarterback in the draft. Mm -hmm. Six quarterbacks go before number 13, and that's exactly what happened. And, and, and there really is a, a big difference in style between these two quarterbacks. Oh, of yeah. course, O'Connell going to be the guy who, like you mentioned, does not turn it over quite as much as Minshew does, but Minshew also makes the plays happen with his feet, with his arm too, in a way that O'Connell hasn't really shown yet. Right. Uh, really quick, Pat, before we go to break, trade deadline less than a month away. I don't even know what quarterback is left out there right now, but would you look into that market if you're in that front office? If I'm the Raiders, I'm going to ride it out and see what I can get with AOC the rest of the year. I mean, you look at all the past of the great quarterbacks of the past, Peyton Manning's, you know, and now you go in today's era, Josh Allen. A lot of these QBs did not succeed in their first year. It takes them a couple of years to really learn the playbook and get used to an NFL-style system. So I really want to see what I get from AOC this year before I go to the draft and attack a quarterback. All right, you're holding off on them. All right, so, well, going through six quarterbacks in three seasons is tough for any wide receiver, but Devontae Adams, it's enough for him. Coming up, we're getting into the franchise player's trade request and where he might end up. You're watching Sin City Beat. Welcome back to Sin City Beat. Well, it's hard to think any player on the Raiders roster is thrilled with a 2-3 and three start, but Devontae Adams has reached his breaking point requesting a trade from the Silver and Black. It's clear that the Raiders have underutilized their biggest and best weapon. So, Mike, is jumping ship the best course of action for Devontae Adams at this point? It might be, but it really depends. If he opens up the possibilities to any team, it, it could wind up that he goes to a really good team that makes the playoffs. But it's clear Adams obviously values consistency at quarterback. Like you said, he's gotten anything but that. And since coming here to Vegas to play with his college teammate, Derek Carr, it's just been, uh, I, I hate to say it, but quarter, one quarterback after the other that is just not Derek Carr or Aaron Rodgers. And now problem is, if he wants to get back with either of his two favorite quarterbacks, it's not immediately clear, Mariah, that the grass is greener mm -hmm. in either of those two no. places. The Jets could obviously use Adams since they haven't scored more than 24 points all year. But since they just fired their head coach, there's a lot of uncertainty in that building. And with Derek Carr out for multiple weeks for the Saints with an oblique injury, is Adams going to want to have rookie Spencer Rattler throwing him the ball uh, for however long Carr recovers? And also, one more thing gives me pause here, Mariah, before saying either of these places will be better spots for Adams than the Raiders. The Jets and Saints have the same record as the Raiders. They're both two and three. Yeah, that, that is a really good point for both of those teams. It's not a good time to join them. Harry, if you're Aaron, where are you going? Or excuse me, Devontae, where are you going? I was Aaron, like, Aaron, you want to come over? <laughs> where is Aaron going too? Yeah, right? where's Devontae going? I mean, it's a situation that last week with all the reports that we saw from the reporters from out of town, like Adam Schefter, like Ian Rappaport, we were like, all right, Devontae is as good as gone. And then this week, Antonio mm -hmm. Pierce goes out in his press conference and he's like, hey man, Devontae's still a Raider. If he gets healthy, he'll go out there and play. And it's like, all right, that's something that we didn't see. Devontae didn't go on his weekly hit with Kay Adams on, on her show. And it's like, all right, is something changing here? Is he happier now that Aiden O'Connell was named the starter with the silver and black? And it's just things that right now we're not 100% sure of, but as you guys said, the situation in New Orleans and with the Jets isn't the same as it was a week ago. And you look at the parity right now in the NFL. The Raiders are going to play the Steelers, who were one of the few teams to kick off the season 3-0. and If they beat the Steelers, they're going to have the exact same record at the end of week number six. So things can change. I would love to see Devontae Adams still rock the silver and black, and it's now just a wait-and-see game because also the Raiders, it seems like they're not moving from what they want, and they don't want, they don't want to keep paying Devontae Adams mm -hmm. when he plays, if he plays for another team. That's what the reports say, so it's a wait-and-see game. It really is. Now, having a player of Devontae's caliber and losing him, Pat, do you think this hurts the Raiders? Because we haven't really seen him get involved in the games he has played in. Yes, it hurts the Raiders for the current season. But the Raiders, they're really looking long term. Ultimately, you can't win a Super Bowl without a quarterback, and they have yet to find their franchise quarterback. 
If I was the Raiders, I would look to see what I would get for Devontae Adams. I know they're looking for a second round draft pick. A lot of teams think that that's too high for it. Take a third, take a fourth, see whatever you can get for him. Just because he's 31 years old, next season he'll be 32 years old. If you look at if you look at the past of all the great wide receivers that have played recently, Randy Moss, A.J. Green, Julio Jones, they were all on their way out the door by they were 34, 35 years old. So by the time the Raiders are able to compete, Devontae Adams is not going to be in his prime anymore. So see what you can get for him and build for the future if I was the Raiders. And it's a way different NFL than it was in 2018 when the mm -hmm. Raiders got a first round pick for Amari Cooper. Mm -hmm. So also nowadays you see guys going to other teams that are stars and just getting a third round pick, a fourth round pick, or if it's a second round pick, everybody gets shot. So it's also see the risk and reward situation there for the team. If you're out there recruiting and trying to make up for that Adams loss as a as part of the Raiders, what, what's your pitch, Harry? How do you get uh, someone to buy into this team with the state that they're in right now? I mean, right now, for Adams, it's like, all right, look at the Raiders, look at what's out there. I think right now, like I said, there's not a lot of teams. Maybe San Francisco would mm -hmm. be a sleeper, in my opinion, because they haven't been uh, doing the way that a lot of folks thought they would be doing early in the season. But they do have weapons, like a lot of injuries. I mean, the pitch right now is the Raiders, Look at Las Vegas. Look at the way that this team is trending towards. I think they're trending on a positive way. They're just missing that key piece right now. It's the quarterback. That's the toughest one to get. And, and as far as making the pitch to players, as far as buying in, of course, Antonio Pierce is all about that. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, let's face it, he was an interim coach who earned the full-time status. But that doesn't mean that he's immune from being on the hot seat. Of course, we just saw Robert Sala just got fired from the Jets. No one was really expecting that. So that could happen at any time. So obviously, head coach Antonio Pierce doesn't want him to go. He wants to win, the players want to win, and then, of course, it also begs the question, at, at what point is Max Crosby available if, if Devontae Adams gets sent out? Of course, don't want to speculate too much on that, but if, if Adams gets traded, that almost kind of tells the players, hey, we're kind of punting on this season. How do you tell Max Crosby, the ultimate competitor, hey, we're still out there to win games. I think that man is locked in no matter what. He's ride or die yeah. with the Raiders, especially under Antonio Pierce. But yeah. very good point, Mike. Thank you, guys. All right, well, whoever gets the start at QB, they're about to take on a tough Pittsburgh defense, hungry to get back in the win column after a three-point loss to the Cowboys. We're getting into the Week 6 showdown next. Welcome back. All right, things we can expect in week six. Shaky quarterback play, the absence of Devontae Adams, and a Pittsburgh defense that does not mess around. With all of these variables in play, Pat, how can the Raiders pull off a home win this weekend? I think the Raiders do ultimately have a decent shot this week, and it's really all going to start with the running game. We talked earlier about how they had a lot of trouble establishing the run. But now they're going to go against a Pittsburgh defense that is really good against the run. I think how they're able to establish it is to call more play action passes for AOC. They really don't, didn't call a lot of play action with Gardner Minshew. They were middle of the pack calling it. They got to call it a little bit more, especially because Pittsburgh is really bad in the secondary. They allow 28th in the league in yards allowed per pass. So being able to establish the run is really going to open up that passing game for AOC. And I think we can ultimately give them a good shot to pull off the victory. Uh, Harry, does O'Connell have it in him to air it out and, and open up the pass game? I think he does have it in him, but more importantly, in my opinion, is taking advantage of that offensive line with the Steelers. Mm -hmm. They've played four different offensive lines in the first five games of the year. They lost their uh, potential starter and center in the preseason. So even though you lose Christian Wilkins as the Raiders going to the IR with the foot injury, I think there's hungry guys behind him. Of course, we all know John Jenkins and Adam mm -hmm. Butler, but there's also also a local kid right behind him, uh, Jonah Laulu, uh, who just got drafted this year by the Colts. He got um, let go, brought back in the practice squad. The Raiders got him through waivers, so that's positive. I think he can be a guy that eats in this game. Of course, Max Crosby, you got him. Tyree Wilson, we need his coming out party. We need a big game from him. So I think that's the point where the Raiders can take advantage. And look, for many years, the Raiders, their identity has been offense. This year, their identity, in my opinion, is 100% oh, yeah. defense. So the defense is going to be the one that keeps them in the game. Now the offense, Aiden O'Connell, don't lose that ball. Don't give it away. Give this team a, sh a shot to win the game. Well, it normally comes down to turnover battles no matter who's going head-to-head. -head, but is this, a, is this 
whoever's defense is better is winning this game? It might be. And speaking of defense, I think the Raiders' run defense in particular uh, is going to look a lot better this game because the Steelers, known for running the ball, they want to run the ball. They drafted big maulers on the offensive line. Najee Harris, their main running back, he's averaging 3.3 yards per carry. Nada. That's not good. And Justin Fields isn't even averaging four yards a carry. The team cannot run the ball very well. So if you force Justin Fields to pass, you have a chance. However, of course, if you get to him, Max Crosby obviously loves to pin his ears back, get to the quarterback. Tyree Wilson, we talked about him getting involved as well. They need to be able to contain because Fields has better legs than any quarterback that they've seen this season. So they're able to keep Fields in the pocket, make him beat him with his arm, which so far in his NFL career he hasn't proven that he can do. I think the Raiders defense really has a shot, and Fields has been prone to turnovers in the past. This year he's cut down on it, but if you keep him in the pocket, and I think uh, Max Crosby and Tyree Wilson, if he lives up to his potential, yeah. if they can set the edge, keep him in that pocket, contain him, I think the defense has a chance to hold them under 20 points, for example. I know that Najee hasn't been, been as productive so no. far, but he's the only running back in the NFL the last three seasons to surpass 1,000 yards rushing. So you always got to be careful yeah. with that guy. Even though the offensive line mm -hmm. hasn't uh, been the one that they were hoping it was going to be, you just got to be, he's one of those red dot guys where it's like, don't let him beat us in this game. That's right. And that might be more so on Arthur Smith's play calling as well. But Harry, you're in that stadium every weekend. It's actually projected that 56% of the fans will be <laughs> Steelers fans in this game. I know a lot of fans travel all the time because it's Allegiant Stadium, it's Vegas. Do you think that makes an impact? Of course it makes an impact. And I mean, fortunately, it's been the second year in a row now that the <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers come to Vegas. So usually the second time around, it's a less amount of fans that right. come out to, to Vegas. But it's always that weekend that you get there on Friday, you party Friday, you party mm -hmm. Saturday, you go to a game on Sunday. If it were another team in Vegas, it would be the same situation. But the Raiders, they just got to be ready. It's going to be a loud stadium. The Steelers fans are going to bring it. Now, Raider Nation, I need you guys to bring it as well. Yes. So don't sell right. those tickets. Go to the game. Game, actually. <laughs> you heard the man. All right. Thank you to Patrick, Harry, and Mike. I am Mariah. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Sin City Beat. Don't worry, Mike Davis will be back, but thank you for tuning in. We will see you next time.